So Glennis Fox, thank you for joining us today. Thanks. So we're here at the SCS um, in beautiful San Francisco. And so, you know, it's, it's a busy time and I do appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thanks. Yes. Um, so Glennis, you are someone who has been associated with the Center for quite a while, the Center for Hellenic Studies at Harvard. Um, and I'd like to just share a little bit about your work. You are a cartoonist, you are an archeological illustrator, you are an educator, um, and you have done a great deal of work drawing and um, thinking about ancient Greek literature, uh, ancient Greek sites, uh, but also a variety of other um, time periods, okay? So you, you really have such a breadth um, and such a really interesting portfolio. Uh, and first of all, I want to point everyone towards your website. Can you share your website with us? Yep. www.glennisfox.com. And, yep. and, and we'll put that on screen. Okay. So, um, so Glennis, right now, one of the projects that you're doing in association with the center is as part of a collaboration with Gregory Nage mm -hmm. and is for a site called Classical Inquiries. Yep. And um, you are producing some original artwork to go along with some of Greg's translations of ancient Greek literature. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, specifically Sappho, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I did a few of those a few years ago around Sappho Fest in Greece, mm -hmm. after Sappho Fest, and then just recently drew a short three-page one for the brother song, mm -hmm. Sappho, which was really um, interesting because it the song is about her brother who's uh, at sea, mm -hmm. right? And um, so for images for this, I used, uh, for reference, images of uh, Syrian refugees landing on Lesbos because it's happening now. But I was thinking of you know, the longing for a family across the water and that's happening now. And that longing for a safe arrival. Yeah. I'm not sure if it comes across. I, I wanted to make it um, a bit ambiguous, but used references of very stormy seas and skies uh, from pictures taken recently. Yeah. So can you share a little bit about your approach to, um, to comics and why you're drawn to that medium uh, for this, what might seem to other people maybe an unusual combination, right? Ancient Greek literature and comic. Yeah, well, I think it's um, there's more and more books published about it. Um, I think um, for me, I feel like I learned, I, I did a, you know, in art school, I drew from the figure, of course, but I also um, drew a lot from ancient art, you know, going to museums and um, just making uh, copies of Greek vase painting. And that seems like that's kind of comics. It's uh, little narrative stories that uh, unfold around, I mean, in books, you turn the page, but and they're, they're, you know, there's space for more story, but uh -huh. I feel like they're they're very close in my mind already. Uh -huh. And um, I studied first um, uh, literature and then went on to study painting. So I, um, but I've always been interested in narrative and art, including um, medieval panel painting or um, or uh, Arab painting that are, or Persian painting, miniatures that are all um, stories. So um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always interested in, in narrative in art and then making it new. Mm -hmm. It's always an interpretation. I think also as I read the, the um, Iliad or the Odyssey, it unfolds to me in imagery. Like I just see these uh, images of what's happening and I want to set them down. Is there a particular image that sort of stands out for you most recently when you think about the Iliad or the work? Well, uh, as I was saying Odyssey, I was thinking of the scene of Nausicaa, and I haven't drawn this, but it would be such a, it's uh -huh. that sequence alone would be so nice. Where she finds Odysseus on the beach? Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. And he's naked and she's doing uh -huh. laundry. And, and there's Greek vases that are uh, of that image that are just beautiful uh -huh. that would be great to play with. Yeah. So uh, I think what's so great about you, and I think it's coming through even in our conversation here, is on the one hand, you, I think, have a very meticulous eye for detail and for um, details for the period that you are depicting. But on the other hand, you have a very playful approach, right? Uh, I, uh, it's, it's the balance you always want. I mean, it's a very difficult balance, but that's what I'm after. Yeah. So um, we're here at the SCS today, yes. just to remind people. So can you talk a little bit about... Um, 
basically why you think that this kind of visual narrative, this visual storytelling is important for people who are working on these texts? Well, uh, it, maybe it isn't. I don't know. I mean, um, I, I, I think playfulness or another interpretation is the key to what you're saying. I mean, I don't think if you're really studying the text, having a visual could be like, I think Plato might say this, it's distracting and um, not essential, but um, for the purpose of bringing it to life, and I think um, there's been countless interpretations of tellings of myths, and I, I think it's still alive. It's, it's a contemporary thing. I mean, I, 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 I have Im new images come all the time, and I keep wanting to draw more and more. Well, you know, I think, um, you know, if we look at the work of Gregory Nash, he often talks about how yeah. the process of visualization was such an important part, even for the community that was part of a performance in ancient times. Yeah. So I think it's something that's... Yeah. And also for young people. I think that's where so many books are published now that have to do with mythology or, um, and or graphic novel or, s or you know, like um, Rick Riordan's mm -hmm. book of a uh, ancient myths, I mm -hmm. think is very popular. Um, it's, and I think um, kids are, it's a way to bring kids into this world and, and to keep up their, their study of um, antiquity. Can you talk a little bit about the mission of the center, maybe, or you know why you feel like the center is relevant right now, or, or through their mission? Of course, it's relevant. Well, my um, I started being there as a spouse of John Franklin in I think 2005. Right. So, so John Franklin, he, he is a classicist, also yes. at the University of Vermont. Yes. Great. Um, and I'd love to talk a little bit about his work in a minute, but um, so please go on. So we were there for the year, and I was, I mean, I was just, I, I had a baby, so I didn't have time, but I had a few books, and Greg was just um, generous, and, s and I had an idea for a project of um, images of the Peloponnese, like uh, I did a book in Cyprus that was images of Cypriot archaeological sites, and I thought, and book of Peloponnesian sites, so he gave me some money to go to Greece after that to, to catalog, you know, photograph these sites, and I'm still working on this book. It's been a long time, um, but but um, in exploring um, the idea of making comics because with panels, I, I, I had done single panels before that, but um, using Greg's translations of the Homeric hymns really got me into doing a longer project that Homeric hymn to Aphrodite, I think I was, uh, I could be wrong, 2005 or six or seven or eight. <laughs> so, but just to back up, so you have mm -hmm. several other works in addition to the, um, the illustrations you did to go along with Greg's translations of Sappho, you have also done yes. several other collaborations yes. previously, and these are published. People can, uh, I think, purchase them in print, correct? Yep. Um, um, from my website, they're, because they're short hymns, they haven't been published by anywhere else yet, but the Homeric Hymn to Demeter I did first with his translation, and then Homeric Hymn to Aphrodite, and Homeric Hymn to Dionysus, and we've been talking about um, Apollo and Hermes, I mean, there's more of those are the big ones. It's just a matter of time, mm -hmm. but it's it's been so uh, great to work with Greg in bringing these out, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. making uh, you know making just doing these drawings for his words. Well, you know, I think the center has make been making more and more of an effort uh, in terms of its outreach to artists, yes. uh, and, and I think it really has been. Um, increasing the vibrancy of the dialogue that happens at the center because I think so much does happen just bringing people together mm -hmm. at the Absolutely. campus. Yeah. Yes, and we that year we were there, we've met people from like Joe and Murray, Joe Reif, who um, is the director of the Cancrii um, dig, and so I've worked for him for about seven years, so mm -hmm. that connection happened at CHS. So that's um, brilliant. So, Glynis, thanks so much for taking time today. I know it's a busy day. We appreciate it. Um, and so we hope to talk to you soon.